right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this sine wave animation that you see here. You have one across the top and the bottom, and then these two going down the side. You can get this preset from my free wallpapers folder. Just look for custom shape animations, and let's go ahead and dive into this. Let's start with the blank preset, and let's go ahead and add a shape. And for this shape, we want to set this to a circle slice. I'm going to set this width to a larger amount, maybe somewhere around 600. And you probably want to make your height a little bit shorter to give it a thinner look, but for the sake of this tutorial and to keep things clear, I'm going to leave the height alone. I'm going to set the angle to 90 degrees. Now you could change your angle here as well, but I'm going to stick with 90 for right now. And what I want to do is I want this to be the top of my sine curve. So we're going to come down here to rotation. Let's set this to manual. And let's adjust this rotation to where it's at the top, where we have like a peak in our curve. And since I'm using 90 degrees, with a little bit of math, we actually want to set this to exactly 315. And here's the top of our curve. Now what we want to do is let's come back to root in KOWP and let's add a stack group. Let's take that shape and let's cut and paste inside of that stack group. Now I'm going to take this shape, I'm going to copy and paste it inside of the stack group. Now we have two of them. And for this stack group, I don't want it to be vertical. I want it to be horizontal, and we'll set this to horizontal center. So now they're beside each other. I'm going to go back to the items. I'm going to go to that second shape, and let's adjust the rotation, the offset of this thing, to where we have the bottom of our sine curve. And if we set this to 135, it'll be exactly the way we want it. Now, if you were using a different angle amount, instead of 90, maybe 60 or something bigger than 90, you would have to adjust this offset accordingly to get it to match perfectly at the top and perfectly at the bottom. So now let's go back to the stack group and in the layer, let's take the margin and let's bump it over and that's going to start bringing them closer together. But something else we need to do in this stack group as well is going back to that second circle slice, let's go to its position and let's apply some padding. Applying bottom padding will start to move these two slices closer together. And what we want to do is we want to adjust this bottom padding as well as the margin of our stack group to where these two pieces line up perfectly. Now that may be a little off and what we can do is we can save this and go back to the home screen. And it is a little off so we want to go in there and adjust that accordingly. And if you're following along with this tutorial using the exact same numbers, the bottom padding on that second circle slice, I have it set to 822. And then for that stack group, its margin, I have it set to negative 190. And again, that is using circle slices with a width of 600, a height of 20, and their angle is 90 degrees. If you're using different numbers, then your margin and bottom padding will be different. But this actually looks pretty good. And notice here we have a pretty much seamless transition from one circle slice to the next. Now the next thing we want to do inside of this stack group is we want to copy that first circle slice, copy, paste, and then we're going to take this second circle slice, copy and paste that. And as we copy and paste this, the slices are off the screen, but that's exactly what we want because when we animate this, we're going to be sliding this in, so we need extra circle slices to do this. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take two of these again and I'm going to copy and paste them. So now we have six of these circle slices. Now we may not even need all six of these, but I just have them there just in case. And if we head back to root for this stack group, if we go to its position, if I just start sliding the X offset, you can see that we do have this continuous sine curve. And there's actually six of these circle slices that make that up. Now we don't want to use the X offset to animate it, obviously. But what we do want to do with this X offset is we want to take it and slide it this way because I'm going to have it sliding from left to right. So I'm just going to slide this on over until we see the end and I'm just going to take that and put it off the screen. Now let's go to the animation for this stack group. Let's add one and let's do a loop. So we already kind of have the effect going on, but we're going to have to change two things. One, we want our ease to be straight. And you can see it does have a little shift in it. And the way we fix this is we come down here to our speed and we want to adjust this speed to where you can't see that jump in the animation. So I'm going to mess around with that speed right now. Now I'm going to mess with the duration to see if that jump is a smooth jump. So 
So somewhere around 115 is what looks pretty smooth to me. We don't see that jump as the loop resets back. And now if we just take our duration and bump this on down, you can get some uh, nice sound effects here. Let's save that and apply it to the home screen. And yeah, there you have it. That's how you can create a sine wave using the circle slice inside of KOWP. And again, you can pick up this wallpaper, the one I showed you at the beginning from my free wallpapers folder. That was called Custom Shape Animations. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.